I think this is an absolutely critical season for Jaron Hall. I think it is as critical as as any player in any sport Why? in college athletics. Because I think Jaron Hall's upside is incredible. His inability to stay healthy has crippled his performance. Right. And I think that he is supposedly, if you believe what everybody's saying, Jaron Hall has supposedly put everything he has into his body this year. Get your lazy ass in the gym. He is, yeah. I mean, he has really worked on being durable and staying healthy. And I think this is a very critical season for his his speaking of legacies. Legacy is a BYU quarterback. Um, I think he is really dynamic. I think he is he has a chance by the time he's done playing in Provo to be the best um dual threat quarterback they've ever had. Um and I think that would be quite an accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Um obviously, you know, you're looking at guys like Taysom Hill, um, you know, it, 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 I think he has a chance to be the best dual threat quarterback they've ever had. And he's not probably going to go, you know, number 2 in the draft like Zach Wilson did, but he really has a chance to do some special things at BYU. He's got to be on the field to do that. And when he's on the field, he's got to be healthy. You can't have a three-game stretch like he had this year where he just wasn't fully capable. So I think this I think this is a huge moment in time for Jaron Hall. Yeah, I think ultimately it comes down to the choices he makes on the field, if I'm being completely, you know, brutally honest. Like, I think he can lift all the weight he wants to. He's never going to be durable enough to take a hit from a 250-pound linebacker running at full speed. No quarterback is. And yeah, maybe that, not. And I think that Jaron, uh, I agree, Jaron is a special talent. But, again, in football, because of the physicality and the the brunt force that that game is played with, you have to make better decisions. I mean, this yeah. this is – this isn't the first time that we're talking about mobile quarterbacks at the college level or in the, or or in the NFL, you know, making better decisions. I mean, you know, look no for, no further than RG3 in his time. He made poor decisions. He did not last. And that's what Jaron Hall has to understand. And furthermore, that's why I think the recruiting that's gone on in this offseason is is going to allow him to make better decisions, Yes, you know? And and I think that it would be a real shame for Jaron Hall to put in all this work in the offseason, all the strength training, all the conditioning, healing the body, to go out and try to take that hit for that first down in a big moment. Like, step out, right? Don't get hit in the open field. Take the three yards instead of trying to get five. Like, that's what – that's a development that yeah. needs to happen. Yeah, I think that this season is make or break for Jaron Hall. I really do. Because there's there's nobody else. He is the guy. He is the number one. He is not competing for the job this year. He's the number one. Yeah. And he needs to he needs to dominate from the first snap well, of spring all the way through bowl season. And if you're Conover sitting in the background, I would be ready to play. I would be like obviously he's gonna be ready to play, but like for just him as a guy, as a dude, as a football player, like you know, don't just embrace the role of being a number two. Embrace the role of knowing you will at some point be the number one on this. Oh, team. I think as a number two, you have to believe you're the best quarterback. Yeah, in the team. and, and no like, and it. I think that I think that I guess I, maybe this is me being cynical. I don't believe for a second that Jaron Hall is going to survive the whole season. I just don't. Ooh, okay. Uh, Jeremy Bolton says Jaron's going to ball out, no doubt. I ain't worried. Brandon Whiteside says Draymond would be nobody without Clay and Curry. See, and that's what I mean. That's just such an average take, dude. Gabe Ledley says Drake has more iconic Nikes than LeBron. Agreed. I would agree with that. That's a very good take. I mean, if you look at the the shoe game, I mean, I think it's right now, I think Kobe's are the GOAT. Like right now, because of his passing and the inability to get your hands on Kobe's shoe, Kobe's are the GOAT. But there's no doubt the iconic shoe in all of sports is the Jordan. Mm Mm-hmm. Any iteration of the Jordan. Um, I think that LeBron's shoe is not even at the forefront of most people's minds. No. I mean, it is. And it's because of him. It, it's because. It, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Brylark says, was Steve Young considered a, a dual threat at BYU? I don't know. Were, were there dual threats back in the 30s when Steve Young was playing? I don't Young think that's playing? what you called Steve Young at that time. I in said that in the, the 30s. Yeah, the 30s, right. I'm for real. 